Good morning, everybody. How are you? I hope everybody's feeling okay this Thursday morning. Um, again, uh, hopefully you, you, you're still respectful to everybody around you. I know it's hard being cooped up at home, but this is the way it has to be for a little while. So today we're going to continue with a little bit with the Haggadah and some of the questions that I asked you yesterday. We'll, we'll try to answer those and see how well you did. First of all, you know, when it talks about the four sons, it says, Echad Chacham, the Echad Rasha, the Echad Tam, the Echad She'enu Yedeli Shol. And here's the question. Why does the, the, the Haggadah use the term Chacham? It should have said Tzadik. Yeah, the opposite of a Rasha is a Tzadik. Why does it use the word Chacham? It should have said Tzadik. So the answer that I heard, a very beautiful answer, is that if somebody there that if somebody's at the say that's a Russia, let's say you have some of the sons that's a Russia, he's going to try to cover up all his wicked ways and influence you to his way of thinking, which is really dangerous. In order to combat this wicked, uh, these approach, these wicked approaches that are, that a Russia has, and not to be influenced by them. It's not enough to be a tzaddik. You've got to be wise to be able not to fall into his trap. And to teach us this understanding, the Balagada does not call the first one the tzaddik, but it calls the first one the chacham. You have to know what to answer a rasha and how not to fall into his trap. That's one. Another Devar Torah is that as far as what do you answer the chacham? The Chacham is answered, the Apata Omerlo Kehilchos Pesach, Ein Maftirin Achar Pesach Afikonin. What do we answer the Chacham who presented this wise question with the words, What are all the laws and the statutes that, that, that Hashem Elokeinu gave us? You answer him, you teach him like the laws of Pesach. It says, Kehilchos Pesach, like the laws of Pesach, that you do not depart from the eating of the Afikonin with a dessert. Now, it should have said, you should teach him Hilchos Pesach. What do you mean, Kehilchos Pesach? Like the laws of Pesach. You know, you teach him the laws of Pesach. So that's number one. And the second question is, of all the mitzvahs of Pesach, and we know we have a lot of them, why was the law that you are not allowed to have dessert after Afikomen, which is the Korban Pesach, you're not allowed to have dessert after the Korban Pesach chosen. Why? Of all answers given to a Chacham, he's asking you, what are all the statutes and all the, all the laws? And that's what you answer him? There's not much more to answer him? There's not other things to answer? So the answer is like this. You are to teach your wise son all the laws of Pesach like the laws of Korban Pesach. What is the law of the Korban Pesach? That its taste should linger, and therefore you should not eat anything afterwards. In the time of the Beis Hamikdash, the last taste of the Seder was the taste of the Korban Pesach. The Korban Pesach had to be eaten after everything you ate that night was done. Uh, a la sova, when you're already satisfied, when you're already full, that's when you eat the Korban Pesach. And this taste of the Korban Pesach was to linger and stay in your mouth. Therefore, nothing else could be eaten afterwards. And what did this taste come from? What, what, did, what, what did we learn from here? This taste was here to recall the last taste of the Bnei Yisrael when they left Mitzrayim. You know, in Bnei Yisrael, in Mitzrayim, the night before they left, they ate the Korban Pesach, right? And that was the last thing they ate. So, so too should you teach the laws of Pesach in a manner that they should linger in your son's mind, not to be forgotten, like the Korban Pesach. Kehil Chosa Pesach. And that's what we answer the Chacham. Now, I'd like to go over a number of the questions that we talked about yesterday, and we can ask maybe a few more. First of all, why were the Jews commanded to count and consider Nisan the first of the year, Rishon? Why didn't they call him by names? Why Rishon? And the answer is that this helps us to remember at all times 
the great miracle of our divine delivery from Mitzrayim, and just as our counting of the days, as the first day, the second day, after Shabbos, when we say Shir Shal Yom, this keeps our, in our minds the, 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 the divine creation of the world, so this would keep in our mind the great miracles that happened in the month of Nisan, which is the first month. The second question is, why is it customary for rabbis to deliver a lot of sermons on halacha on Shabbos Agadol? And I told you yesterday that this year we may not have the privilege of hearing this. The Midrash tells us that on the Shabbos before Moshe took B'nai Israel out of Mitzrayim, Moshe delivered a big, big discourse, all the laws of Pesach, the Korban, to B'nai Israel. Why is the Haggadah read by Mincha of Shabbos Haggadah? Well, one reason is that the redemption began on Shabbos Haggadah. Another reason is to, to make the youngsters familiar with the contents. And a third reason is, it's like a rehearsal for Seder night, so that the text will be more fluently read. And another question, why is no matzah permitted to be eaten on the day before Pesach? Uh, the answer is, of course, that the day before Pesach, we have to make a separation. We have to make a hefsik between what's going to be a mitzvah and what is permitted all year long. And matzahs are permitted all year long, but it's not a mitzvah, but Pesach it is, so we make a separation. And the not using a torch or a havdola candle for bedikah schametz is because, number one, it's, it's dangerous. You could set the house afire if you do that, right? And it's very difficult to, 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 to look and to search. You can't hold a torch to a crevice or a hole. All right. And why do we say the bracha al biyor chametz instead of al bedikah schametz? Because the main purpose of the mitzvah of this search is to get rid of it, removal. And that's done on the next day, and therefore the bracha is done now. And the, the Pesach is called Seder Nights because there's a certain order that we follow for the Pesach celebration, which is set down in the Haggadah. Okay, uh, and that answers to yesterday's questions. Today, I'd like to ask a number of questions also, a couple of questions, take a few minutes. And number one, why are three matzahs used at the Seder? That's the first question. Another one is, why is there a mitzvah to drink four cups of wine? And why are women also to drink the four cups of wine? What's the significance of the egg on the Seder plate? And why do we eat karpas at the Seder? These are the questions for today. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.